Following my last upload, I immediately started thinking about why anyone should study engineering. And so far, well, I've got nothing. Okay, maybe not quite nothing. You see, after a year working as an engineer, I've noticed a few things which I never learned or realized even up until a few months ago, but which I'm so grateful for. And I'm sure they'll help you see why engineering is a pretty special career. Now, if you've ever worked a normal sort of job, you might just have experienced the boredom or purposelessness that seems to accompany them. And that is likely because your capacity exceeded what you were doing. In fact, when you feel bored, that is your subconscious telling you that it needs more stimulus, more something. And I bring this up because many of you are smart. And as you progress through school and college, you will only become more intelligent and curious, and you'll begin to demand more intellectual exploration and stimulation to not feel bored. Now, although every job will satiate that for a while, like everything, you get used to it and systematically, each interesting part of your day becomes a drudge. So the feeling fades and nothing is worse than realizing that this is going to be how you feel for the rest of your working life. And research shows actually that this is how most people feel, from laborers to lawyers. And I guess the point is that if you possess a natural affinity for growth and feel drawn to increasingly complex problems and ideas, you'll outgrow nearly every job there is and what you'll be left with is a feeling of being stifled and wasted. But not in engineering, because engineering is a field that you will never outgrow. It is the most complex, expansive field there is. And as you develop, your tools will develop, your position will develop, your ideas and creativity will expand. Engineering will grow with you in what can easily be a lifelong union, a life spent engaged. And a part of you might believe that engineering is too cold, too sterile, it couldn't possibly be enjoyable over a lifetime, but engineering has one of the highest job satisfaction rates in the world. And more to the point, if you look at the satisfaction rates of graduates and compare them with senior engineers who have spent over 20 years in industry, they are both extremely high, something remarkably few professions achieve and something that is only possible in a field that is expansive, expanding and doesn't have a glass ceiling. It's probably also worth remembering that we are all derived from generations of creators, problem solvers. That is what our ancestors did. That's what humans are good at. And so we all have a natural affinity for what is essentially engineering ingrained into our psyche. And so, of course, we find it naturally fulfilling and engaging. Next, let's talk about how becoming an engineer penetrates everything in your life in a way that few other degrees can really match. For instance, let's say that you got a degree in exercise science. Now, outside of your work, you'd probably be pretty good at communicating, discussing the human machine, optimizing workouts and so forth. But it wouldn't really change your ability to fix something that's broken. It wouldn't make you much better at problem solving. It wouldn't make you better at analyzing complex options and making decisions or interpreting abstract information or developing the capacity to design or the confidence to feel as though you can figure anything out. And really, it wouldn't produce a big change or drastic improvement in who you are, or at the very least, it wouldn't continue to develop your character over your lifetime because the nature of most jobs don't really change much over a lifetime. But again, engineering kind of gets around this because unlike most other fields, it is incomprehensibly broad. And so the courses you'll study are set up to primarily teach you equally broad skills, fundamental penetrating skills that are sweeping in nature and can be applied anywhere, such as managing complex systems, problem solving, lateral thinking, understanding physical systems, working with people, programming, electronics, fluids, heat, abstraction. And these skills aren't only useful when you're at work, but they're useful everywhere. Every time you buy a car, do a renovation on your house, troubleshoot a computer problem, set up internet, communicate with professionals, debate with friends, contemplate your future or reflect on your past. And I know every job does this, but I don't believe there is any profession which can quite touch engineering in its reach because I don't believe there is any profession that demands such reach. Finally, these days, it is hard to not feel disengaged from the world, to want to escape to a more interesting place, whether that's in a video game, a movie, or music, because those worlds seem so rich, so interesting, right? And our earth, with its concrete buildings and cold grey floors, seems just straight blank. But let me tell you about the blades inside a jet engine. These pieces of metal are spinning so fast that the centrifugal force 
is like having a London double-decker bus hanging from their tips. And if that isn't bad enough, they're also surrounded by gases that are so incredibly hot that the metal should have lost all mechanical properties and been thrown apart in a tornado holocaust. But this doesn't happen because they are cooled. Now imagine trying to cool something like that. A piece of metal spinning at over 3000 RPM with a tip speed exceeding the speed of sound and surrounded by gases north of 1500 degrees C in a use case where failure is simply not an option. How would you do it? Maybe you could try to water cool it, but I doubt you'd be able to pull the heat away fast enough and you'd have to be able to cater for a massive pump, let alone the radiators, or maybe you could try some other type of inbuilt heat exchanger, but I don't know. Or maybe a complex arrangement of Peltier coolers, that'd do it. But truly none of those solutions would work. So here is how they actually do it. Each of those blades are slightly hollowed, and there are minute holes piercing from the outside of the blade into the internal cavity. Cool air is then pumped into the blade and allowed to flow from the hollow through the tiny holes and out over the surface of the blade. This isn't used so much to cool the metal, but rather to cover the surface in an incredibly thin layer of air, which is hundreds of degrees cooler than the gases the blades are surrounded by, and in so doing keep the blades protected from the gases, separate from them, and at a perfectly safe temperature. Think how elegant that solution is, how genius it is today, let alone decades ago when it was first used. And knowing that, maybe next time you fly you'll think about this and appreciate it, or if you ever get a chance to see a jet turbine up close you can look specifically for the holes and tell your friends about them, or maybe you're at work trying to solve an entirely unrelated problem but your brain draws a correlation with this style of cooling and you solve an equally difficult problem. And the reason I'm telling you this is to share the feeling of just how rich our world is. And if you study engineering, you'll be able to see this wealth everywhere. And you'll feel an engagement with the world and a sense of untapped richness that too many people coast through life, never really seeing. And before I go, I am sorry about the infrequent uploading, but I haven't been idle and I've got some new things coming. So until then. <laughs>